What is going on guys? My name is Senna and welcome back to another video. In my last video, I gave you guys 10 tips to win more games in Valorant and one of my tips was to start using the operator. It's been a few years since I made my op guide and it's pretty outdated. So in this video, I'm gonna be bringing you guys a new and improved up-to-date oping guide for 2024. This video is going to be an in-depth guide going over every single opping mechanic and teaching you guys how to absolutely dominate your games with the operator. Right before we jump into the video though guys, I want to take a moment to introduce you and thank Valorant Tracker for sponsoring this video. Valorant Tracker is the most popular app for viewing and tracking your stats and improvement. You can look at all sorts of stats like KD ratios, win rates, agent win rates, map win rates, and so much more. One of the coolest features Valorant Tracker offers is the live match tab where you can actually see the stats and ranks of every player in your game. That I also mentioned that Valorant Tracker is 100% free to download and use and you don't have to pay a single penny to get access to all of these awesome tools. Click my link in the description or pinned comment to download Valorant Tracker today. Huge thank you to Valorant Tracker for sponsoring this video. And with all of that being said, guys, let's jump right into the video. First and foremost, let's talk about why opping is so good and why you should even bother to learn how to op in the first place. Opping is extremely powerful because it allows you to easily get first bloods and first picks at the beginning of the round. Many of you who've been watching my channel for a while now will know that I love preaching about man advantage and how having numbers advantage is extremely important to win your rounds in Valorant. When you have an op in your hands and you know how to use it, you are basically guaranteed to get a first blood at the start of the round. Especially for those of you who are stuck in low elo, getting an op going will completely turn the game around in your favor. The only downside to the op is how expensive it is because it will run you 4,700 credits. Saving for an op is really easy and what I do is on second round after you win pistol round, just buy a marshal. This will guarantee you to be able to buy an op on fourth round, which is the best way to get it going early in a game, at least in my opinion. Cool, now that we know why the op is so good and how to save for it, let's talk about the best agents to op with. As of me making this video, the two most viable agents to op with is going to be Jet and Chamber. The reason for this is because they both have what I like to call a get out of jail free card, with Jet being able to dash out and Chamber being able to TP out. Even though these are the two best agents to op with, realistically you can get away with opping on any agent. It will just be a little bit difficult and more limited with what you can do for reasons that I will explain in a minute. Now Jet and Chamber have gotten pretty significant nerfs to their movement utility since my last opping guide, so you're going to have to be a lot smarter about how you position yourself. To make this easier to understand, I have divided opping positions into two different categories. These two categories are passive angles and aggressive angles. Let's talk about what a passive angle is first. A passive angle is a position where you can escape to cover without the need for any movement utility. Examples of passive angles include positions like playing in hookah on bind or playing on site on B and holding long. In these types of positions, you don't have to rely on any movement utility like a dash or TP to get to safety and these are generally pretty easy positions to survive in. Now let's talk about aggressive angles. An aggressive angle is a position that will be very difficult to get out of without the use of any movement utility. Examples of aggressive angles would be like peeking out on B long or swinging showers on bind. These types of positions are a lot more dangerous and will have you much more more committed to a fight and will be a lot harder to get out of without the use of some sort of movement ability like a dash or a TP. Both passive and aggressive angles have a place in time and they're both good when used effectively, but because of the recent jet and chamber nerfs, it's a lot harder to get away with using aggressive angles. I personally love using passive angles and you guys will see me use them a lot in my gameplay and I think they're really strong 
because it's really hard for the attackers to clear you in these spots and you can easily get out of them. The biggest tip that I can give you guys for good positioning is to constantly be unpredictable. Once you op in one spot, the enemies are going to remember that for the rest of the game, which is great for throwing them off and constantly moving around the map with your op. This can also allow you to play mind games because if you've conditioned the enemy team into thinking that you keep going A, B, A, B, you can play B twice in a row and they'll re-hit the site the next round thinking that you're going to rotate. Now that we understand the fundamentals of positioning, let's talk a little bit about about peaking. This will mostly have to do with aggressive angles because with a lot of passive angles you won't need to actually peak because you're already posted up on the angle pre-round. My biggest tip is to never hold shift or walk peak into a common angle with an op. Walk peaking angles will make you an extremely easy shot for your opponent to hit and you'll get one tapped a lot doing this. Jump peeking into angles helps a lot against riflers because it'll be really hard for them to headshot you. They'll usually end up hitting your leg or body, which doesn't really matter because you can just delete them with the op. Another tip for aggressive peaks is to have a teammate help you post up on the angle. For example, having your sky throw a flash for you or have your sova dart for you. This will delay the enemy team and buy you time to position yourself and post up. This will also take their attention away from the angle and distract them from the fact that someone could be holding that angle with an op. I think that pretty much covers peaking pretty well, so let's talk a little bit about cross crosshair placement. The first fundamental of opping crosshair placement is to not aim head level, aim for the body. The body is so much easier to hit, and since the op one shots to the body, it'll make getting frags so much easier. Don't aim for the head. The next fundamental is how far off the wall you're going to hold your crosshair. With opping, you typically want to hold your crosshair wide because your enemies will be swinging into you. Holding your crosshair too close to the wall can make it very difficult to react in time when an enemy swings you. Holding wide will give you more time to react and make hitting your shots a lot easier. This is not to say that you should never hold it close under any circumstances, because if someone walk peaks the angle, holding it close will net you a free kill. It could also be used to punish enemies that jiggle peak a lot, but more often than not, holding your crosshair a little bit wider is going to be much better. A tip for more experienced players is to hold your crosshair high up for the common jump peak angles. One of the most common jump peak angles is top mid on ascent. Players love to jump peek over this crate to get info on mid, and you can punish them by holding for it if you trust your reaction time. If you watch 10s, you'll see him do this a lot. These shots can be pretty difficult to hit, but if you read someone and hold for this, you can get a pretty cheeky kill. And that covers the three main fundamentals of opping, which is positioning, peaking, and crosshair placement. The last thing I want to talk about is your backup plan or your secondary weapon. The op is great at long ranges, but if someone is pushing you and getting really close to you, it can be difficult to kill them. This is why I suggest that you always have a secondary weapon ready to use. More often than not, I will opt for a shorty as my secondary weapon. The shorty is so good to pair with jet because if you're getting rushed, you can just throw it on a smoke and then play inside of it and punish any player who thinks they're getting a free kill on an opper. Otherwise, on more longer ranged maps like Breeze or Icebox, I would opt for a sheriff. It can be really helpful if you're getting pushed and need to take a fight at medium range. Another reason why jet and chamber are both really good op agents is because they both have natural secondaries that really complement oping. Jet has her ultimate, which is her knives, which is very, very strong when paired with an op, and Chamber has his headhunter, which he can whip out at light speed if he ever has to use it. Just having a secondary weapon can be very helpful for complementing your opping, and I always make sure I do this. And I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to talk about. In this video, I explained to you guys every fundamental about opping and the most effective ways to use it to dominate in your games. If you have any questions or concerns about anything I talked about in this video, drop me a comment down below and I will try to help you guys out. A lot of you guys were asking for an opping guide, so hopefully this video will help those of you who are wanting to learn how to pick up and start using the op. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, don't forget to drop a like down below and also subscribe to the channel if you have not already. I have a Discord server linked down in the description below. You guys should come join that. We have a super chill community. We would love to have you. Thank Thank you so much for taking time out of your day or night to watch this video and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.